Thanks for uh, this oral talk. Um, my name is Maximilian, and um, I'm presenting XLSTEM Extended Long Short Term Memory uh, today together with Corbinian. Uh, this was a project with many uh, collaborators, and at this point, a special thanks to Johannes and uh, Sepp for giving us the chance to work on this very exciting um, project. And the goal with this project was to um, revive some old ideas and bring them back into of, of the original LSTM and bring them back into the nowadays transformer era and in the era of large language models. Um, but before we come to the XLSTM, let's give a short recap of the original LSTM. What you see here on this slide are the memory cell updates of the original LSTM. And um, they have the cell input Z and the hidden state output H. Um, they also have one memory cell state. Um, uh, note that we use here the Scala notation. So this memory cell state C is a Scala, and it has three gates. So the forget gate controls what is forgotten from the previous memory, um, and the input gate controls what goes into the memory. Then the output gate controls what goes into the next hidden state, and this hidden state goes also to the next layer. Um, all those gates are sigmoid uh, activated, so they have sigmoid activation, and the um, cell input uh, set is squashed via a TAN H function. These uh, input and also the gates, they depend uh, on the one side on the current input via these uh, input weights, W, and also they depend on the previous hidden state um, via these recurrent weights, R. And since we use the Scala notation, these are Scalas in this case. And this gives us uh, the original LSTM formulation. Um, so this LSTM is nowadays still used uh, a lot for sequence modeling, and it was long time state of the art even in language modeling. But then in 2015 and 2016, it got replaced by the transformer architecture. And the reason for this um, is mainly the three main limitations of the LSTM. And the first limitation that we identify in our paper is uh, the inability to revise storage decisions. Um, we exemplify this um, with the nearest neighbor search problem. So this is basically a problem where you um, give the model a token at the beginning of the sequence, and then it should scan over the sequence. And depending on the um, distance to the current input, um, it makes some predictions. And here, of course, the transformer is uh, the gold standard, as it can always attend back to the very first token. So it has all the tokens always in memory. And um, as it finds a new closer token, it has to, like, of course, um, um, overwrite what is has written in memory. Um, and we see that the LSTM here really struggles to solve this task, and the XLSTM gets really close to this gold standard of the transformer. And how do we do this? We do this by introducing this new form of gating, which we call exponential gating. The second limitation is the limited storage capacity. So um, we exemplify this uh, limitation with the rare token prediction experiment in our paper. So what we do here is we predict um, uh, the next token on uh, Wikitext and check the performance for the different token frequencies in the training data set. And especially here in the very left column, um, we see that um, the LSTM is really, uh, performs really bad on the very rare tokens. And um, this is since it has limited storage capacity. When we go to the XLSTM, where we introduce now a new uh, larger uh, memory, which, which is a matrix memory that is now larger than the Scala, we see that we even outperform um, the transformer even on these rare tokens. And finally, the, the last um, and probably the most important limitation that <coughs> leads to the transformer replacing LSTMs is the efficiency. So <coughs> as the LSTM is a recurrent neural network, it lacks um, the parallelizable training mode that the transformer has. And to overcome this limitation, we uh, introduce a fully parallelizable variant of the XLSTM, and we also make this memory mixing, which we call this dependency on the previous hidden state via recurrent weights, more efficient by introducing a new form of memory mixing. The core of uh, the XLSTM now is, um, as I said already, the exponential gating. And exponential gating has, uh, similar to the original LSTM, three gates, but in addition it has a normalization and a stabilization. Out of these three gates, the input gate is exponential, the forget gate and output gate are still sigmoid, and output gate could be also switched, for example. 
Um, for the normalization, we add to this uh, memory cell state a second memory state, the normalizer state, and then the output of the uh, state becomes the ratio between the, these two memory cell states. And to make exponential gating work, we need to control the magnitude of the exponential, and we do this with a special uh, stabilization technique. So now let's have a look at how this exponential gating actually looks like. So here on the slide, we see again the original LSTM formulas, and we highlight the memory structure here, C, uh, in green, and the gates in blue. And to get from this original LSTM to the exponential gating, we make the input gate now exponential, and we also add this second um, normalizer state, N. And then, as I said, the output is then the ratio between the cell and the normalizer. What is not shown here on the slide is the stabilization, but I highly uh, recommend to check out the paper for the details on this uh, to make the exponential gating actually work. And with this um, exponential gating um, in mind, we introduce two new memory cell variants. And the first of this is the SLSTM or Scala LSTM, as we call it. And the reason is because um, similar to the original LSTM, the memory cell state is still a Scala. And also, analogous to the original LSTM, the cell input is this ton H um, of the set pre-activations. The, the second modification, apart from exponential gating to this SLSTM, is this new form of memory mixing. So again, I show here the Scala pre-activations for this SLSTM, but what we do in practice is typically um, we stack those Scala memory cells um, on top of each other so we get a vector. And then um, this recurrent weights, which are here scalars, become now a matrix, and this is typically a D by D matrix. And since we have to uh, multiply or apply this matrix um, in every time step, this is very inefficient, and this is the reason why Transformer replaced the LSTM. But to make this more efficient, what we do is we make this a matrix block diagonal. And how you can view this is like um, we divide this embedding dimension into different SLSTM heads, and then only within the heads uh, the memory cells can talk to each other, but not across heads. So this is um, what we, how we see is this like a headwise memory mixing. And the second um, 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 memory cell that we introduce is the MLSTM. And now uh, Kubinen is going to explain the MLSTM. Yes, thanks, Max. <clears throat> So the MLSTM now introduces this memory cell state C, um, which has a cell input that um, is the outer product of a value vector V and a, a key vector K. And um, to yeah, this um, cell state is now matrix, and to get then an output that is a vector, you down project it again with a query vector Q. And these value key and query vectors are just input dependent, so they don't depend on the previous hidden state. Also, the gates here don't depend on the previous hidden state. And this now enables um, that you can do parallel training with it. So let's look again at the formulas. You have this um, matrix cell state C and this down projection vector Q. And you can unroll this um, cell state C um, you, uh, as this weighted sum of the outer products of value and key vectors um, multiplied by, uh, via these aggregated gates. And because this is all not dependent on a previous state, you can reshuffle this and arrive at a formula also for multiple query vectors that has this matrix form that you might be familiar with. This is very similar to linear attention. And what is special here is this gating matrix D that contains the exponential input gates and the aggregated forget gates. And this makes now everything parallelizable in training and um, therefore a lot more efficient. So <clears throat> these are now the two variants, SLSTM, which has the new memory mixing, but still memory mixing, so it can do state tracking, um, and the MLSTM, which has this matrix memory, so can store a um, lot of information and has this tra parallel training capabilities. So now let's look at some experiments. Um, 
in our paper, we showed experiments on synthetic tasks um, as well as long-range arena tasks. But what I want to focus on here is language experiments. So, yeah, because language is what we ultimately want to get good on. So for this, we did um, language modeling on trained on language modeling on 300 billion tokens of Slim Pajama with a GPT-2 tokenizer, and we trained four different model sizes, 125 million to 1.3 billion, and compared to transformer variant, uh, yeah, the Llama architecture, um, Mamba, RWQV4, and two variants of XLSTM. The first variant is a XLSTM 7.1, so you have seven of these MLSTM blocks, so the matrix memory blocks, versus one SLSTM block, which has, which has this um, new memory mixing, and another variant which just has the MLSTM blocks. And when you look at the results, you see that RWQV4, which was, well, one of the first recurrent architectures challenging transformers, is still outperformed by the Llama architecture. Then Mamba outperforms Llama, and XLSTM outperforms Mamba by a similar margin on across all parameter sizes. And yeah, this shows that XLSTM has it has a similar scaling behavior as the other models and outperforms them yeah, across all model scales. So it holds promise to be a serious competitor also for larger model sizes. So this leads me to the conclusion. We have extended LSTM by exponential gating and matrix memory. And our results show that XLSTM performs favorably on language modeling compared to transformers and state space models. Uh, our scaling laws indicate that X larger XLSTM models will be serious comp competitors to current LLM architectures. And what's next? Um, we're currently building larger models, right? faster and more efficient kernels. And uh, we're curious about new application areas where XLSTM might perform favorably. And one of these application areas is vision. Experiments there show that vision LSTM um, is a competitive architecture and holds promise to be a new generic backbone yeah, in computer vision. So with that, I want to say thanks for your attention and Feel free to ask questions. Thank you for the talk. I came in late, so maybe you already talked about it. Is there any insights on training stability for uh, these models, especially when you go to longer contexts? So, so the question was on training instabilities. Yeah. yeah. So um, we, yes, of course, training is hard of those large models, but we did not find any more severe training instabilities that they are, than they are already known from transformers. So we expect to have the same, the same uh, issues, if you want to call them, as in transformers, but nothing different.